This video is on centers of mass, and so let's take an example, and as I work through this example, I'll talk about the formulas that we are going to be dealing with. Now, I'm not going to completely work out the integration on all these. The integration is really just going to be a bunch of uh, terms that we're going to be integrating as far as powers of x's and stuff, so that's not going to be bad. The integration is not going to be bad here at all. I really want to talk to you about the formulas and talk to you through about the setup every single time that you have here. So let's take this example. It says find a center of mass with density rho. Now, if you're talking about rho being 1, then they'll change that from a center of mass and call it a centroid if rho happens to be 1. But in general, it's still just a center of mass. So find a center of mass with density rho of the region bounded by the graphs of f of x equal to 4 minus x squared and g of x equal to x plus 2. Just like you do when you're finding area between curves, you're going to have to do basically the same thing here. So you're going to have to be able to draw that region and find your points of intersection and everything. So that's what I've done. I've drawn 4 minus x squared, x plus 2 in red there, 4 minus x squared in black. And then I've gone on the side over there and done just a quick algebra to set 4 minus x squared equal to x plus 2. And you get your points of intersection to be at negative 2 comma 0, x and y respectively, and then at 1 comma 3. So there's my region that I'm talking about. And basically, if I'm trying to find the center of mass of that, of that region there that has some kind of density, then basically think about if you could cut that out from your computer screen, pick up that piece of paper, and imagine that piece of paper was just some kind of metal or something that had some kind of density to it, then if you were to take that and try to balance it on the end of your pencil, then that point where you could balance it would be its center of mass. So to find the center of mass, you need, basically, you need three things. You need the mass of that region, and then you need the moments of respectively about the x and y axis, and then you can go find the uh, center of mass. So let's talk about how we find the mass first. So the mass, in this case, since we're talking about something in two dimensions, is just the density of whatever that piece of material is times area between those two curves. So this right here is what we've done before, which is the area between those curves, or the area of that region there. So to get that mass, the mass of anything, then basically you have your area formula and you just got your density out there, which is a constant. So this is rho times the integral from negative 2 to 1, and as always, watch your signs. So for me, f of x is 4 minus x squared. That's my top curve always. Now this is one region. We don't have to split this up or anything, so this is just one nice region that we have here. Everywhere in that region, 4 minus x squared is on top, minus, and then x plus 2 is on the bottom. So you still have to keep that, those kinds of things in mind when you're going through and doing this, about maybe having to split it up into a couple different pieces if you have some, um, if you're going to find the area of a couple different parts there. But in this case, for the most part, it's just going to be one, um, one region, start and stop, same location with all your values there. So this is going to be rho times the integral from negative 2 to 1. Uh, I'm going to write this in descending order. This is going to be negative x squared minus x, I distribute my negative in here, and then I have a negative 2, and the 4 and the negative 2 and end up being a positive 2. All that in dx. And so we go through and integrate each one of those pieces, so integrate negative x squared, integrate negative x, integrate 2, and so this would be rho times, and this would be negative x to the third over 3, minus x squared over 2, and then plus 2x, all that evaluated from negative 2 to positive 1. And if you go through and do that, you're going to get 9 halves times rho. So the area between those curves is 9 halves, and you have your density there rho. So that's going to give you your mass. And you always need to find that. If you're going to find the center of mass, is you need the actual mass of that, which is just rho times the area, or the density times the area. Okay, now we need the moments about each one of our axes respectively. We need our moment about the x-axis and we need our moment about the y-axis. So the basic definition of moment is the distance times mass. So you see our formula for mass again in here. We have rho out here and we have our area again. So there's our mass part of this that we've been talking about. And the moment is the distance that you are times that mass. So let's go back and look at our picture for just a second here. And so you have an infinite number of points in this region. So you couldn't sit there and sum them all up because you have an infinite number of points in that region. So what we're going to do is we're going to break up this region just like we do with anything. We're going to break up this region into a bunch of rectangles. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to find a moment of each one of those rectangles. 
Now, if you take all those y values that make up that rectangle, that form that rectangle, then what we end up doing is we end up taking the center of those rectangles, the center of my y values is my distance, because we're talking about our distance that we are to the x-axis, because we're taking our moment about the x-axis. So the distance that each one of those rectangles on average is from the x-axis is the sum of those two functions divided by two. So it's the f of x plus the g of x, all that divided by two for each one of those rectangles. And again, we're finding basically moments of a bunch of rectangles and we're summing them all up, which is where the integration comes into play with this. So each one of those rectangles, if I were to just break that up into an infinite number of rectangles, to take the distance of each one of those rectangles that they are on average from the x-axis would be just the average of those y values, which would be the sum of my two functions, all that divided by two. So back over here in my formula, we see that we have distance, which is the sum of our functions, our y values, f of x and g of x are our y values, and it's the average of those, so we're adding those up and dividing by two, times our mass, which in this case is we have our area, and then we have our density out there, which gives us our mass. So our moment about the x-axis here is always going to be rho times the integral, in this case from negative two one, of the distance, which is going to be four minus x squared plus x plus 2 in this case, all that divided by 2, all that times our area, which is 4 minus x squared and then minus x plus 2, if we uh, plug in our values there. Now, again, this, you're going to have to integrate this in some form or fashion. So, in this case, probably what I would do is I'd pull out the half, and so this would be rho divided by 2. So rho divided by 2 times the integral from negative 2 to 1, of, and this will be negative x squared plus x plus 6 times, and as we saw a minute ago, 4 minus x squared minus x plus 2, that's going to be negative x squared minus x and then plus 2. All that dx. Sorry, let's talk about dx in the previous line. And if you go through and multiply that out, so it's going to take you a few minutes to multiply that out, so for the sake of time, I'm going to save a little bit of time here, but if you multiply that out and integrate it from negative 2 to positive 1, then what you get for your final answer, factoring in the half that you have out there, is you end up with 54 fifths, all that times rho. So again, I pulled the 2 out, so you would really get 108 over 5 for the inside of that integral there, and then you have that 2 out there, so it reduces it down to 54 over 5 times rho. So again, that's our moment about the x-axis. And then, same idea, our moment about the y-axis, so now I'm going to figure out, I'm going to do this in red here, I'm going to figure out how far I am from the y-axis. Well, at any point in time, these rectangles, the distance that they are from the x-axis, any of those rectangles in general, the distance they are from the, from the y-axis, sorry, the distance they are from the y-axis is just some x value, positive or negative. It's just all my x values there from negative 2 to positive 1. That's the distance. And then my mass is still the same thing. It's f of x minus g of x, all that times rho. So for our moment about the y-axis, we're taking our distance, which again, each one of those rectangles are x units away from the y-axis, and then times our mass, which is our area, and then we have our constant out there, rho. So we do rho times the integral from negative 2 to positive 1 of x times 4 minus x squared minus, and then x plus 2, just like we've been doing, all that dx. So this is rho times the integral from negative 2 to 1 of x times, and this again is negative x squared minus x and then plus 2, all that dx. And so we can multiply by x, and so we get rho times the integral from negative 2 to 1 of negative x to the third minus x squared plus 2x. Um, all that dx. And then again, go through and integrate each one of those terms. If you go through and integrate each one of those terms and you get that the moment about the y-axis is negative nine-fourths times rho. So again, plug it into a formula. And you're going to have the formulas to use for your tests and stuff. But I just wanted to make sure you understand a little bit of where that came from. A moment, by definition, is distance times mass.
And again, our mass is always that area between those two curves times the density rho. And then our distance, if we're talking about the moment about the y-axis, our distance is x. And if we're talking about the x-axis, the distance that we are from our x-axis is always the sum of those two functions. The center of mass is our x-bar and our y-bar. So for our x-bar, it's the moment about the y-axis because, again, if you go back and look at our picture, we're trying to find the center of all our x values here, which basically that's our moment about the y-axis, the average there, because those are what give us our x values. Because if you think about the distance, the distance we are from, our, from the y-axis, that gave us our moment about the y-axis, but those are our x values. So since those are our x values in my formula down here, for my moment, for my center of mass, to find x bar, I take all my moments about the y axis and divide them by my and divide them by my mass. So be careful about that. And then y bar was all our moments about the x axis, all that divided by mass. And again, if you if you think about that for just a second, if you go back to our where we talked about our moments about the x axis, then all of these right here, these distances that we had, those were our y values. So since those were all our y values then down here in our formula we're finding our center of mass to get that center of mass for our y value we want to use our distances for our y values which ended up being our moment about the x-axis so think about the distances and that'll help you with your formula there so for x bar and y bar for x bar it's our distances in terms of our x values which if you think about it was our moments about the y-axis because those are the distances we were from the y-axis which end up being x, our x values, and then for y bar, those were um, our distances of our y values, which if you look at your formula, was the moments about the x-axis. So, we plug in our values respectively, negative 9 fourths divided by 9 halves, and then 54 fifths divided by 9 halves. Now, in, this, in every single case, the density really doesn't matter when you come down to find that center of mass, the density will cancel out because both of these pieces had a row in it. We had a row here and row there, and row and row there. And so when we divide them to find that center of mass, that density really is unimportant. That density cancels out. All right, so negative 9 fourths divided by 9 halves. It's going to be negative 9 fourths. We're going to multiply that by 2 ninths. That's going to give us our x value. And then 54 fifths. Multiply that by 2 ninths. That's going to give us our y values. And so if you take that and reduce it, you get negative one half there. And then over here, nine and fifty-four can reduce to six, and so we get twelve fifths. You get negative one half comma twelve fifths. That's the center of mass of that region. So if we go back and look at our region real quick, I know my picture has gotten ugly here, so I'll try to do it. Uh, I'll just do it in black. Negative one half. So there's negative two. So negative one would have been right there. So there's negative one half and then twelve fifths. So Somewhere right in there is our center of mass for our region. Again, just some formulas that you're plugging into, but I wanted to make sure you hopefully help you understand those formulas just a little bit better. Sorry about getting me backwards at first down here when we were finding our uh, center of mass. I wrote it down backwards. But you need the mass every single time, which is just area times density. You need your moment about the x-axis, which are your y values, the distances you are from the x-axis would be your y values times the mass, which is the area, and then you have your density out there. And then for your moment about the y-axis, you're taking your x values, because the distance you are from the y-axis would just be x times the mass, which is the area times our density. And to find that center of mass, our x-bar and our y-bar, for x bar, you have to use the moment about the y axis because in thinking about the distances, those were our x values. You divide that by mass. And then for our center of mass for our y value, we take the moment about the x axis. And again, think about that. Those were our y values as far as distances were concerned. And divide that by the mass. And then if you simplify that nicely, you get down there at negative 1 half 12 fifths. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. Again, it's just the formulas, but I wanted to kind of talk through the formulas a little bit and make sure you understood exactly what you were finding when you were finding a center of mass.